In this movie, we're going to cover a few conditional formula pitfalls you need to be aware of. These are some of the rules that this formula must operate and obey at all times. Let's go ahead and look at our number sample. Remember when I said that you could display virtually anything in your if-then statement as a result? Like in this case, I said bonus level 1 or no bonus or default to bonus level 3. Watch what happens if instead I take revenue amount times 0.2 or 20 percent and then I hit my check button. It will tell me a number is required here. What this message is trying to say, but not doing a terribly good job, is that when using your if-then statement, your result, i.e. whatever follows the then, i.e. all your conditions and cases, must be the same type of field as an output, meaning I can't have my first line be a number and then all the preceding lines or following lines be something else. I cannot mix an output of a string, a date, or a number. They must all be either strings, numbers, or dates. Even your final exception case. It's just one of those rules you have to keep in mind. If I change these to something else, such as revenue amount times zero, otherwise revenue amount times 0.25 as in 25 percent. Then when I check my formula again no errors are found. Now keep in mind it's merely checking the syntax. It doesn't check whether Joe Blow or Kurt Dunlap or Dimitri Zavarotny get a certain percentage or not. Unfortunately Crystal doesn't go out and check with accounting to make sure that hey I can give someone a 25 percent commission. But syntax wise we are golden. And if we save and close, we now have a successful formula. The other pitfall I'd like to reiterate is the complexity. We're basically taking what's in the database and displaying it modified format on the report to convey a message. In this case, we're messaging what our commissions are going to be if they're within these conditions and parameters that we've set forth. A major pitfall is, of course, that once you can start doing this on the report side, sometimes people get lax on the database side. I've seen pages and pages of if-then statements that were truly amazing, but really when it comes down to it, who can read over 5,000 pages of an if-then statement and catch exactly where an error could or could not be? My point is to use this with caution. Using it every once in a while or cases that are easily defined, it's a great tool, but it can grow out of control very quickly. This statement is not meant to be a stopgap measure for all the data entry errors that could happen on any given database system. Removing the human element, of course, is something best designed on the front end, but I'll step off my soapbox now and we'll come back to business. To summarize, the rules of the if-then statement are actually fairly simple. You state your case, whatever that case may be, whether it's mathematical, whether it's string-based, whether it's looking for X or looking for a certain date, and then you tell it what should be displayed, followed by another case or the final catch-all default case, if you will. That would be the final else statement. If you play around with this formula, you'll find that it's very helpful and is a great formula tool to have.